Good evening. A terrifying scene for the family of a Lehigh man as they watch him crash land during a skydiving jump that went horribly wrong. Some sort of air current caught him and it kind of picked him up and threw him down. The family estimates he hit the ground going about 50 to 80 miles per hour. This kind of landed in the middle of houses, so unfortunately a lot of people were there to see what happened. Emotions are running high for family and friends. Initially, I thought there's no way that he's alive. It was obviously super traumatic watching him hit the ground. My name is Austin Measles. I've achieved about 3,000 successful skydives and one unsuccessful skydive. All right, guys, welcome to Utah. My name is Marshall Miller. We were together with Austin on the day of the accident. Austin had a place to be. It was a family function that he had to be at. We were all going to get together as a family, and then Austin was like, I'll just meet you there. It seems crazy, but it's, that's what we do. This was the spot right about here. My intentions was to land right here in this grassy area and uh, just go have lunch with everyone. But I ended up having lunch at the hospital through a feeding tube instead. <laughs> when we first saw him, we didn't think he was alive. Austin shattered a lot of bones, but didn't break his neck or spine. So when they pulled Austin off of the helicopter, immediately we could see his head. He looked like a pumpkin. It was round and huge. His jaw was just kind of hanging back. It didn't have much form to it. And that was just his face. He had a broken femur, he had a broken foot, he had broken arms, he had broken teeth. My whole face is made out of metal now, and my whole pelvis is made out of metal. We've got around 50 fractures. I was so out of it, I couldn't write, I couldn't talk, I couldn't talk for almost three weeks. It's hard to know if someone's gonna be okay mentally when they can't talk. His head had suffered severe trauma, and typically with trauma like this, you get severe brain damage. They then gave me a piece of paper that I scribbled on. One of the first things I wrote was, am I dead? And then he wrote, scribble, 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 liquid death. Him asking for liquid death was a, another big um, sign that he was himself. I'm sure the nurses were like, what, what is he talking about, liquid death? Like, this is weird, because I was just asking if I was dead. <laughs> He's always just been obsessed with liquid death. That's all I had been drinking leading up to that point. At one point, I was actually out on a job site, and I got the phone call that Austin was making motions with his hands. He was doing this, and we thought that he was like doing a shaka, saying that he was all okay or something, you know? And, and what it turned out, what he wanted was just water. I'm a very hydrated guy, I'm constantly drinking water, so I was very thirsty, and I really wanted liquid death. I would take a can and I'd pour some in a cup for him so that he could like baby bird it into his mouth. <laughs> I remember at night, I, uh, I saw liquid death on a cart. He said he, like barely maneuvered it with his leg or his arm or something and pulled it over to him and he said he was taking sips of it at night against the doctor's wishes. I grabbed this little cart and I was so excited to get a drink Then I just dumped it all over my face. So it probably just went straight into my lungs but it got inside my body and I was pretty stoked about that in the morning. Watching Austin's recovery is actually the coolest part of this whole story. He's in the hospital for a week or two and two days later he's putting his gown on and like pretty much leaving the hospital. There it is, man. I remember, remember writing that. <laughs> it's about all I could write, but I do remember writing it, and I remember, remember breaking all those bones. <laughs> That's liquid death. <laughs>